you can answer this question for me because we've been looking at the kingdom for a couple of months. Where is the kingdom? Oh, there's Pep. There's Pep. Pep. Arr. Oh, <laughs> she oh. was yawning. She oh, was yawning. We never gave them the pictures of what it looked like. Oh, the tore up one. Yeah, we just have this of where she. She was she's actually been yawning. It's like a. I took the picture, but it looks like she's about to bite it, but she's not. Yeah, I apologize, like, you guys. That's not the old. That's not the Eaton Bible. I never took a picture of that. So. Do you have the one where she's just chilling? Oh, Heather like, has it. Heather no, has it. Heather look can at, give look it to at, y'all. Look at Ro just chilling on the bench. Like she's even sitting funny with her back legs in between her front legs. She's like, adorable. It's like, is that uh, comfortable? Even when she does bad so things. So flexible. I don't think I could do that. It would be comfortable. Okay, enough about our dog. Can we talk about Jesus? Let's talk okay. about Jesus. The kingdom, where is it? In you. In us. It's in you. Say, the kingdom is in me. The kingdom is in me. Luke 17, 20 through 21. Now, when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, see, it's here or it's there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. So fill this in. The kingdom is in you and you give expression to it through the church. God does not save you and then send you on some remote island. He wants you to be connected with other people that believe the same way that you do so that all of your gifts and your energies can come together. You know, when you see something incredible, whether it's a concert, whether it's a game, you know, a lot goes into the success of that, even beyond the players. All the people that are keeping the stadium clean, all the concession stand, all the people selling concessions, all the men that financed that team in order for that team to even exist. And so we are all a part of God's family once we make Jesus the Lord of our life and we need to learn to take our place and we have to be serious about that. So on Wednesday night, we looked at a couple of options for foundations in our life. Who was here on Wednesday night and can tell me what this brick means and what the sand means. Okay, Jackson, come on up. You can use um, Pastor Greg's mic. Tell us what those two things taught us. Um, that you have to build, build your foundation on something that's like sturdy. Okay. And if you build your foundation on sand, um, you can have this really nice house, but it'll fall through and it'll be a waste. Right. So fill in on your handout, you guys, what represents building uh, on a beachy foundation or like on the sand? Has anybody ever, ever built a sand castle? couple people, it doesn't last, right? So this is the the way to get your life not to last. When you build your life on what you want, life isn't about what you want. We give all of our wants and our desires to him and he causes us to be a success, right? We've talked about it before. You know, when um, we were younger, we had crushes. Maybe we liked certain people. We wanted certain people, but we gave that to God and thank goodness or we would be with the wrong people right now. We wouldn't even be in hops probably, neither one of us. So you don't wanna build your life on what you want. What about this next one, what you have? You don't wanna build your life on what you have. Some people make it all about what they have, what kind of car they have, what kind of uh, shoes they have. It's all about what they have. Can I tell you really honestly, no one cares what you have. Have what you have because you enjoy it. But if you have what you have because you want to be impressive to other people, no one cares. Tell your neighbor, no one cares. No one cares. cares. Okay. Number three, we build sometimes, and this is a beach-like foundation on how you look. Okay. And what did Jackson say was going to happen if you build this way? Your life is going to fall. Grab that brick for us. What does that brick represent, Jackson? Building on what? Good found, building on a good foundation. And what is that good foundation for us as believers? The Bible. Exactly. Very good. Give Jackson a big round of applause. Thank you for helping us with our first science experiment. Luke chapter 6, verse 46 through 49, Jesus said that. He wants us to have a good foundation, which means we build on the Word right. of God. So the foundation, uh, there's a definition there for you is on which something is founded, the basis of groundwork for anything. See, what you guys are doing right now and your commitment to come to church and your parents' commitment to come to church is you're building a strong foundation for your future. You may not see it and you may not see it growing, but it is growing. And as you continue to build, you're gonna have stability 
where a lot of people are unstable. They're with this guy and then they broke up with them and then they're moving here and they're gonna do this and then they're gonna do that. Well, they probably weren't like you are right now and taking this seriously. Because when you take this seriously right now and you build a strong foundation, it's going to create stability. Because those verses say, when the storms of life come, you will not be moved. And that's the goal. So if we build on the word, which is our goal, we have to look into the word to see. It's just like every great company has a motto or has a mission statement. You know, in our church, we have a general mission statement for everything that we do. Tell the lost, teach the truth, see the captive set free. But then every single ministry within our ministry has a different mission statement. Like it's our goal. Like those of you raise your hand if you're in sixth grade. If you're in sixth grade, we already have a plan for you by the time you're 18 years old. We have a plan. In youth ministry, our goal is to empower you to build your life on the word and learn how to hear his voice for your life and avoid having so much baggage by the time you're 18 that you can barely graduate because you're dealing with all these scars, all this hurt, all this regret, all this, all these mistakes. Um, that's our goal. So when it comes to the Word of God, His kind of mission statement for us, or we call them pillars, is really three major things. And these three things are never going to go away. They're always going to exist. They are the foundation of what God's kingdom looks like. And so remember, we saw them in 1 Corinthians 13. Now these abide faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. So because the enemy is a counterfeiter and he can't create anything, he counters all of the foundation that God has designed. So faith is your first blank there, always competes with works. It's faith versus works. What that means is you're gonna have to decide, are you gonna trust God with your life or are you gonna try to work it out on your own? What do you think about that? It's a tough decision. Just kidding, it's not. That's right. It's It's actually really only challenging for people to say, I'm gonna lay down what I think. I'm gonna lay down what I want, right? The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. What's the next thing it says after that? Anybody know? Lean not on your own understanding right? But in all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. That's the challenge to say, you know what? I'm not going to do it my way. Yeah. I'm not going to do what I think. I'm going to follow the still small voice. That's why Pastor Charity said, and it was just exciting to see those of you that are in sixth grade, like if you stick with this and you stay plugged in in church, you know, year after year after year, you're going to know how to hear his voice. Yeah. Uh, and then all it comes down to is you being willing and obedient to do that. So this really faith all boils down to what you believe about your life. You know, and, and don't get caught up in all of the hype. Sometimes right now it's like trendy to be like, well, I don't know if I believe. I'm like, I'm just exploring new things. Like, don't be weird. Don't be weird, bro. Okay, we'll I love you. And I'm not making fun of you because you had like an emo moment. But this is forever settled. Hallelujah. You don't need to explore anything. You just need to get. Now, if you don't focus on this, then you are going to be confused. Right. And when your friend's like, well, what, what about this? And what about that? It's like they're 12. Right. They don't know anything about anything. Don't right. question your faith because of some people that you go to school with that yeah. don't even know what God's word says. They've never even heard one faith-filled message. You guys have heard how many faith-filled messages. So every time you hear the word of God, there's an opportunity for your belief system to be made right. So really faith is all about what you think. Do you think in line with what the word says or do you think in line with what the world says? How does faith come? By hearing and hearing by the word of God. Where is it found? Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing. So if you want to be strong in the kingdom, you're going to have to be strong on the word. Mm -hmm. That's why all of our messages are available to you for free. You can re-listen to them on our YouTube channel. You can re-listen to them on the app. And if there's no cost, there's what? No excuse. No excuse. So we re-listen to the word over and over and over. Why? Because it's building faith. And we want a strong foundation. It's going to take, whatever God has called you to do, it's going to take faith. You know, when God spoke to Pastor Dean about moving into this building and leaving our old building because it was too small, 
He told him to buy this building and we had the money to buy this building. So we paid cash for this building. Hallelujah. But do you know that after that, it took faith in God to complete this project. This is just an example of what it's gonna take in your life. When I told God that I would obey him and I would follow his voice to go to the school that I went to, I didn't know anybody at that school. I had never even been to that school before, but I had to trust God that I heard his voice and every step there was an answer. Every step there was help. Every step there was a supply. That doesn't mean that there weren't things that I had to overcome, but he was right there. When we moved into this building and renovated it, guys, you would not believe anything that could happen Anything that could go wrong, wrong, went wrong. Some of you guys may not know this, but the guy that we hired to do all of our networking and all of our Wi-Fi, you know, hooking up all those little hubs so that you can have Wi-Fi, we met with him. He's an incredibly talented business owner. Uh, we purchased a lot of stuff. He went to Colorado. It was in the summer, and he got killed in a whitewater rafting accident. Gone. And all of our stuff because his family didn't really know what it was. They hawked it, y'all. They sold all that. We didn't even get our stuff. So not only did we lose our guy, but we lost our stuff. Our first electrician company that we hired, they were audited by the IRS. Their business went under. They went no no longer, like gone, out of business because they, they, got, they got them on um, payroll tax fraud, I think. And so one thing after another, one day my dad like read the paper in the morning. Does anybody have parents or grandparents that read the paper in the morning? Lame. Anyways, but Pastor Dean's reading the paper and it's like, oh, that guy that got caught on felony charges because they put all that stuff in the paper. That's our plumber. Looks like he probably won't be at work today. He got caught on felony charge. Like everything that could go wrong went wrong. You don't quit. Right. You don't quit. Well, I just don't feel it. Like I keep messing up. Join the club. Get over it, repent, and keep going. You can't be soft if you're gonna be an incredible champion in the kingdom. Building a foundation means that you don't quit and you keep going back to the word. And I wanna go back to what Pastor Charity said. It's gonna require faith to do what God's called you to do. It's important that every single person in this room know and believe beyond a shadow of a yeah. doubt that God has specific has a specific assignment for your life. Yeah, so good. And that specific assignment is going to require faith. Without faith, you won't be able to accomplish right. this specific assignment. That's why it's so important that we, how does faith come? Hearing. By hearing. That's why it's so important that we hear the word. That's why Pastor Charity said, it's archived on YouTube. Yeah. If there's no cost, then there's no, no excuse. excuse. So you guys have the availability to hear the word, but you have to take responsibility to say, I want to hear the word because that's how my faith is going to grow. And it's only when my faith grows and my faith gets strong that I'm going to be able to fulfill the work assigned to my life. So it's an exciting thing, but it's important that you understand without faith, number one, it's impossible to please God. Number two, it's impossible to, co to complete or fulfill the assignment that God has for your life. Well, and so many people think they're working out God's plan for their life because just scratch down this verse, Philippians 2.12, memorize it. We're to work out our own salvation. So many people think they're working it out, but they're not because they're not in the word. They're doing their own thing. They're busy. Right, but and they they're think they're doing process. it for God and with God, but if you're not doing it in the Word of God, you're doing your own thing. And Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 talks about that. It says, for by grace are we saved through faith, not of works. Everyone say, not of works. Not of works. God doesn't need your ideas. He doesn't need your help. All He needs is your obedience. And if you're not first obedient enough to honor the Word that you do know right now, don't expect for Him to speak to you about your purpose and his plan for your life because he's going to have to work with the step that you're in. That's why I love that phrase, you never move past your last act of disobedience. This all unfolds one step at a time. So you look at the word of God right now and I want you to ask yourself, what does this say that you're not doing? Make that change this week. Make that change if you're not having a quiet time. If you're building on one of those beachy foundations, it's all about how you look. Can I say one more time? No one cares. No one cares what you have. No one cares about your room. No one cares about your car. No one cares about your four-wheeler. No one cares about your jeans. No one cares about your bag. Do whatever you do for you. But if you're doing it for other people, 
Say it after me. No one cares. No one cares. And I'm not being ugly. I'm just telling you that's not what's important in life. You're building your life on a beachy foundation, right? Maybe you were doing that last week. You don't want to do that this week. So you get out the word of God. You get into those chapters that you read every day and you say, okay, what does God's word say? You know, Pastor Greg, that verse, you can write it down. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 that he just said, trust in the Lord. Guys, what do you do? Something comes up, I'm gonna trust in the Lord. I'm not gonna lean on my own understanding. Those need to be real to you. That's how you build. The second pillar that we're laying our foundation with is love. And love always gets in the ring with fear. Insecurity is pride and it's fear. Comparison, strife, all of that is rooted in fear. So really, the activity of your life reveals if you're in faith or fear. How can a young person this age, how can we tell if they're in faith or fear? Pastor Pastor Dean says, fruit happens. Or love or fear, sorry. Right? So the Bible says, perfect love casts out fear. So any time we find ourselves in fear, acting in fear, right? Right. making decisions from a place of fear, we know that we're not meditating on the love of God is not real to us. Why? Because when the love of God is real to us, it'll cast that fear out. You got to be kidding me. My God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God loves me. Of course he's for me. Of course he has a plan for my life. Of course he's made a way for me. Even when there seems to be no way. That's a person who knows the love of God. God will never leave me. He'll never forsake me. He'll never let me down. So that's why it's our responsibility to really think about, to meditate on that love, to let that love become real. Even when you read the Gospels, when you read about Jesus and you see he touched the man full of leprosy, and he said, I will be thou clean. Remember, Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen what? Father. You've seen the Father. So when we see the life of Jesus and we see how he's good and he was gracious and he was kind and he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, that same character represents God the Father. Yeah. So you think about that. It's like, man, God's good. God's patient. Yeah. He's kind. God is the same way with you. Yeah. Amen. Jesus rebuked the religious people, right? But he helped people who were stuck in sin. He helped people who were bound by the enemy. That's the way God is with you. If, you. if you get stuck in sin, what does the Bible say? If we confess our sins, he's faithful and he's justified in, in cleansing us from all unrighteousness. That's a good God. That's a good deal. Yeah. First John 1, 9. That's where it says that. You need to know that. First John 1, 9. When I miss it, repent. Don't hide it. Don't act like nothing. Just repent. Get right. Now, Love is basically the activity of our life. So we have to ask ourselves, what are you doing? So a person who's walking in love, you can tell. And really, we compared it. Who was here Wednesday night and understood this whole prism experiment? Who understood what that meant on Wednesday night? Did anybody? The many facets. We talked about it really fast. Who has their hand up? Okay, we'll just come up here. We're going to turn out the lights. And basically, you're going to tell me what happens on this whiteboard when we do that. Come on up here. Wait for it. Whoa. Okay, you're going to want to move it into the field of that light right there. Barely. When I did science fair, y'all, I always did consumer science. Which detergent is the best? Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not getting into this. Perfect. Okay, now what what are we seeing on the whiteboard right there? Tell me, baby. A rainbow. So multiple colors, right? Right. Right. And how is that like love? Do you remember what how we described that on Wednesday? Something clicked because I dropped everything. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. But there's lots of colors. This is a prism. Wow. Right? It has a lot of different elements. So does love. Good job. Give her a big round of applause. Great job. So love like a prism has so many colors. Love or love has so many elements. 
So if we're walking in love and not fear, we're gonna see it because our character reflects all of these things, okay? So we said, we really gave ourselves nine things to look at. Number one was being patient, which is on your paper. It's already filled in for you. Number two was being humble. You know, pride, you can almost see it. The Bible talks in Proverbs, right, about like a smug look. Ooh. Give me your best smug look. No, but like not exaggerated. Oh, just smug like? Exactly. Yeah, if we put like a big mirror right here, everyone could see their own smug face. <laughs> Maybe it would change and then the I Bible wouldn't have to look at it. So much you to wouldn't say have to about look humility. at it. Humility. So important. I told interns this so this important. morning, and I want you guys to go ahead and write it down because it's going to help you in life. Pride puts you on the fast track to the devil's plan for your life. Pride is like having a V8 or something and not like a V8 juice. Have you guys ever had V8 juice? I mix it like when I'm fasting with like broth from the cafe and it goes hard. Like it, Honestly, it, it, it takes when you're that desperate, level. it does go hard. It does. It does. Okay. But back to V8, I'm talking about engine, <laughs> right? <laughs> Nothing puts you on the fast track to the devil's plan for your life like pride does. Boom. Right? So we repent fast. We don't put on. Pride performs. Pride makes it look like I'm something that I'm not. Pride's embarrassed to be honest about the things that I'm struggling with. Pride has better priorities. I don't have time for church. I don't have time for God. I don't Ooh, have time for dangerous, reading my Bible. Dangerous. Really? You got better priorities? Probably not. So a person with humility, you can see it. What about a good temper? You know, some people just have like a bad temper. You don't have to. Romans 5, 5 says the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. You don't have to freak out every time something doesn't go your way. Right. You don't have to do that. You don't have to. You can control your flesh. You can have a good temper. Love has a good temper, okay? Now, what I'm gonna have you do once we fill all these in, I'm gonna have you pick three that you wanna work on, okay? Kindness, just being kind. When was the last time you did something for somebody else? that didn't have anything to do with you. Courteous, this is yes ma'am, no ma'am. Being able to look at adults in the eyes, okay? Guilelessness. Guilelessness is all about not focusing on the wrong in other people. Guilelessness, not focusing on the wrongs in other people. Um, and then what about generosity? Mm. Not being stingy. The Bible says, Jesus said at one point, if somebody asks you to go one mile with them, go to. If they ask to borrow your like outer jacket, go ahead and give them your coat as well. True. So there's really no place in the Bible. Get your own, bring your own, this is mine. You know what I mean? If they ask for it, it just became public property. Anybody ever basically. been stingy with like their French fries before? Oh yeah. I really ministered to Karina. Anybody ever been stingy with their, their chicken nuggets before? Y'all, sometimes I'm stingy with Pastor Greg. I'm like, no, that's mine. You're not having that. True, true, true. Unselfishness. So we all got to work on that, right? And it can be in any area. Maybe like letting somebody borrow something. Unselfishness and then sincerity. Not being fake. Not putting on. Okay, let's get a microphone in the audience, star three of them, and then tell me what you're going to do. Tell me your three. Pick your three and then tell me. When you have your three, raise your hand and we'll walk around. Okay, sweet. We can start with you, baby. My three are patience, courtesy, and generosity. Awesome. Those are the ones you're going to work on. Perfect. Awesome. So good. Okay. Jackson. Unselfishness, good temper, and humility. Awesome. Stop okay. losing your temper. Jackson here. Jackson got one. five. Yeah. This is Jackson normal. And that's going to be Jackson five. Jackson. One, two, three. Um, guilelessness. I don't know. Guilelessness. Yeah, that's good. Um, patience and generosity. Very good. Mm -hmm. Very good. good, good That's good. so good. You know, when we were reading in the Bible reading um, in the PFS, I think it was last night, and it talked about Jesus. There was no guile found in his mouth. Yeah. So he had guilelessness on lock. Yeah. 
Okay, I'm going to tell mine while you guys are thinking. If anybody else wants to tell theirs, I'm going to tell mine really fast. The three that I want to work on this week are patience, good temper, and, oh, what was my other one? I just had it. Patience, good temper, guilelessness as well. Patience, good temper, and guilelessness. Mine's going to be humility, unselfishness, and generosity. Could I get a pen? I want to star mine. If someone just has time in their life to assist me, thank you. Hey, <laughs> I like that. Quick draw, quick Guilelessness, draw. Guilelessness, what did I say? Patience and good temper. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. Mind. Sometimes I just be getting Unselfish, mad. Like, why do you need to go out? Generous. Why do you need to be fed? Humility. <laughs> oh, man, I should put patience, too, with our dog, huh? Yes, hallelujah. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, who's ready? Elijah. Patience, good temper, and humility. Nice. Awesome, awesome. Okay, Johanna. Patience, guilelessness, and generosity. Very good. Okay, let's all just say patience in this junior high youth ministry. <laughs> Hallelujah. I can minister patience to you guys. He is so patient. He Kindness, really is. courtesy, and unselfishness. Kindness, courtesy, and unselfishness. Ooh, okay. Ooh, good one. Uh, good temper, kindness, and generosity. All the cholerics, good temper, because <laughs> y'all, we'd be like, we'd be slang and attitude if you don't do it our way. Like... <laughs> Quick. Good temper, kindness, and unselfishness. Good job, Erica. Good, Good job. job. I'm going to get a report from your brothers <laughs> on how that goes. <laughs> Y'all, when we were still waiting for some curriculum to come in um, for our homeschool co op, we were like doing some substitute teaching. And um, so I had Millie, but. Millie Pastor, was testing my patience. Pastor Greg was like doing all these other meetings. And so he would be like late. And like every time he came in late, because he's busy, like he has all these other appointments. Millie was glad to let me know. You're, You're late. late. <laughs> Thank you, Millie. I like need... he added to his daily list of things to do, like be a spelling teacher from like I was a good teacher two too, to 2.30. And every time he came in, Millie's my, like, my You're late. Were, my students just just kept going up. Well, I mean, and Pastor Greg's like, what's up with that girl? I was like, she's not a firstborn, but she acts so, like a Father, firstborn. I just pray so for just Millie like... right now. <laughs> Pray for her patience, Lord. Pray for her temper. Well, because he already felt bad. You know what I mean? Yeah, I already felt bad for being late. She just made me feel way worse. <laughs> okay, so we can all be better. Okay, there's a few more over here. Sorry. Okay, back row, we got some. There we go. Okay. Oh, mine's patience, good temper, and guilelessness. Awesome. Patience, good temper, guilelessness. Okay, Maya has one too on the front row, Karina, when you get back. Um, patience, good temper, and unselfishness. Awesome. Um, humility, humility. Humility. Sincerity and generosity. Good job. Awesome. Great. Okay, Maya's going to be our last one. Um, kindness, unselfishness, and guilelessness. Good okay. job. I'm ask D good. how that goes. Good job. Okay. Pastor Greg's going to pray over those commitments. Most of yes. the guys, um, they already obviously have all these nine working. So there's just a couple that. of them. I'm kidding. <laughs> they just didn't want to share. We want to let just the ladies to... go first. Yes. Thank you guys. Thank you. Okay. Let's finish up your notes and then we'll pray. So hope is our last pillar. Hope always gets in the ring with doubt. This is your attitude. Psalms 130 verse five. Guys, this is huge. It says your word brings me hope. So if you feel hopeless, depressed, and discouraged, that was one of your review questions, you're looking at the wrong thing. If you look at the president, if you look at life circumstances or, or what you see in the natural, you may be discouraged, but you have no reason to be discouraged. The greater one is in you, and he's already got a plan for you. He knew the timing of your birth. He knew your parents. He knew your guardians. He knew all of it. So we want to change our attitude, and that's your next statement. If I'm discouraged or depressed, I placed my hope in the wrong place. Did everybody get that one? If I'm discouraged or depressed, I have put my hope in the wrong place. Oh, no. And then lastly, we're asking ourselves, what is my life built on? What am I about? We don't want to build our life on sand. We want to build our life on the rock of the word. And so this week, our focus as a middle school ministry is to practice and, and yield to the spirit of God because it's already in us, babe. We're not trying to work it fruit out. The I want spirit, them to be encouraged. The fruit of the spirit is in us, yes. right? Just like an apple tree should bear what? Apples. Apples. So those fruits of the spirit have been put on the inside of us, but we got to put our flesh under 
right, and let our spirit man rule or dominate. And what, when, our, when we allow our spirit man to rule or to dominate, what kinds of things are we going to see in our life? We're going to see these things, patience, yeah. humility, good temper, guilelessness, all those wonderful things. Does that sound good to y'all? Y'all think we could all grow a little bit this week? Right, just like Hold Pastor, up your paper, just and like we're pa- going to pray over it. Just like Pastor Charity said, with those little babies that we dedicated, they kind of grow up automatically, right? They don't have to try to get bigger. They get bigger. But we have to work on these things. we got to put forth effort. Amen? Amen? So let's pray as we commit these to the Lord. Hey, buddy, I like your shirt, man. looks really nice. This looks really cool. Y'all ready? Let's commit this to the Lord. Father, we commit these things to you. We ask for your help as we endeavor to grow, as we endeavor to be more like Jesus, Father, that we would be more and more Christ-like, that we would be such good ambassadors, giving you glory, Father, that we would be uh, just like Jesus was in the earth, loving and kind, uh, guilelessness, all of those wonderful things that we see exemplified in the life of Jesus. He was and is our example, Father. So we just commit these to you. We ask for your help, and we receive it by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I want you to-